Hi, and welcome to part three in my webcast series on Azure Custom Vision. In this webcast, we'll look at using the Custom Vision Prediction API in an image classification example. My name's Alan Smith, and I work for Active Solution based in Stockholm, Sweden. This webcast is a continuation from part two, where we looked at creating image datasets using the Google Image Search. We'll start out with the .NET Core console application. We'll then add the Custom Vision Prediction NuGet package. And we'll use this package to make calls to the Custom Vision Prediction API with a set of test images that we can use to test our model. Once the model's tested, we can analyze the prediction results for accuracy. If you want to walk through this sample in Visual Studio, I've made the code available on GitHub. And there's a link for that beneath this video. If you're going to walk through this example, you will need an image data set to work with. So it might be worth walking through part two, looking at creating image data sets using the Google image search. In this example, I've used sports cars, but you can choose anything you like, as long as it generates a suitable image data set. If you open the solution from GitHub, it contains two projects, a starting project and a complete project. The start project contains the code that I use when I start the webcast. So if you're following through, you can work through and implement the code in the start project. The completed project shows a completed implementation. So feel free to run this project or copy paste code from the completed project if you don't want to type everything in. In order to run this example, you will need to set these variables to the appropriate settings of the resources that you created in Azure. You'll also need to ensure that the paths are correct for your test image data. So in my hard drive, I have the folders where I've got the images that I've been using to train the model. In the train folder, you can see that we've got the images for the four cars, the Aston Martin DB9, the Lamborghini Aventador, the Porsche GG3, and the Tesla Model S. We've also got a test folder in this data set. This contains images that have not been used in the training process. So the model hasn't actually seen these images. And we've got a number of these images for each of the cars that we've trained the model to recognize. For the project, we'll be using a .NET Core console application. And this isn't going to be a webcast on enumerating files and folders using system.io, so I've already written most of the code to do that. We've got some static strings for the test image folder and the prediction image folder, which is going to be the output folder for this application. In the main method, we're going to await the predict test image folder method. And I've started writing the code in this method. I've set some values for the overall predicted and the overall correct so we can get some statistics. And I'm going to get a list of the directories in the test image folder. And then we can iterate through those directories. I'm going to extract the tag name, which is going to be the file names of those directories. And make sure that those directories are created in the prediction image folder if they do not exist. We can then iterate through the test image folders. And for each tag, I'm initializing some variables on how many were predicted and how many were correct. The tag name is going to be the file name of the folder. So we can dump that out to the console. We can then get a list of the files in that folder, iterate through those files and display the file names in the console. And we can update the statistics for the overall predicted and the tag predicted numbers. What we're going to add to this solution in this implementation is to actually call the Custom Vision API to get the image prediction and then validate the results and set the statistics accordingly. Towards the end of the method, we're going to write out the results into the console. So let's press F5 to fire this up in the debugger and see what we get. You can see that we've successfully iterated through the folders and displayed all the image file names. So everything seems to be fine there. Okay, so let's modify this console application to call out to the Custom Vision API using the fast cars model that we created in the previous webcast. I'm going to right click on dependencies and select manage NuGet packages. And I'm going to browse for custom vision. We get two NuGet packages here from Microsoft. One is for prediction and one is for training. We'll use the training one in a future webcast, but for now we're going to use prediction. So let's add that to the project. I'm going to add a new asynchronous method here, which is going to return an image prediction. And I'm going to call it get image prediction async. As a parameter, it's going to take the file name of the image that we want the prediction for. In order to call a prediction service, we need to specify the endpoint, the project ID, the name of the published model, and a prediction key for authentication. The first thing we'll do in the getImagePredictionAsync method is to create a new prediction client. 
So I'm going to new up one of those and I'm going to specify the endpoint and set the API key to the prediction key. I'm then going to create a new image stream from the image file that was passed into this method. We can then use the prediction client to classify the image, which is an asynchronous operation. Here, I need to pass in the project ID, the name that I used to publish the model, and the image stream. And we'll get an image prediction that we can then return to the caller of this method. Okay, let's see if this method works. I'm going to comment out the method that's going to iterate through all of the test images and folders and just test with one image. So we'll get a prediction by awaiting get image prediction async. And I'm going to copy paste the path and file name of one of our test images. Let's take this image of an Austin Martin DB9. So before we hit F5, we need to publish a prediction endpoint for our model and also set the variables that we defined earlier. So let's go into the custom vision portal. I'm going to select the fast cars model, go to the performance tab, click on publish, and the default model name is iteration one, which is not very intuitive. So I'm going to select fast cars as the model name and select the custom vision webcast prediction service. And then I can click on publish. Okay, so let's copy the publish name and paste that into Visual Studio. Navigate to the settings, grab the project ID, paste that in as well. For the other values, we'll need to go to the Azure portal. I'm going to select the custom vision webcast prediction service. And here we've got the end point. And we've also got the prediction key. So now that we've got all of those variables set, we can test this method. I'll stick a breakpoint on the end of the main method and run this in the debugger. Okay, so we've hit that breakpoint. Let's drag the prediction object into the watch window. So we can see that this image prediction object contains a list of predictions. And as there's four cars in our trained model, we've got four predictions here. If I expand these, we can see the first one has a probability of 0 0.844. People who work with machine learning seem to love numbers between minus one and plus one or zero and one. So this really means it's an 84.4% probability. And the tag name that it's specifying is Aston Martin DB9 which is good news because that was the image that we sent to the model. So it has made the correct prediction of this class. We can see the second prediction is Porsche GT3 with a probability of 14%. For the Model S, it gives 1.3%. And it thinks there's a really, really low probability of this car being a Lamborghini Aventador. So now we know what the results look like, we can then display them in the console. I'll iterate through the predictions in the prediction, if you get what I mean. We can dump out the result.tag name and the result.probability multiplied by 100. So there you can see we've got our results displayed in the console. So that's great. We've seen it's easy to get a prediction from one image. Let's comment out that code and comment in the code that's going to iterate through all of the test images in our test folders. We'll navigate down to the file iteration. Call the code to get the image prediction from the current image. And then we'll do a link query to get the top prediction from those predictions. I've noticed that the top prediction usually appears at the start of the list. But I'm just going to do this link query just to guarantee that we've got the highest probability here. Now we need to fix the statistics. To check if the model has made the correct prediction, I'm going to test to see if the tag name of the image that we're testing matches the tag name of the top prediction, which is going to give me a Boolean variable. And if we are correct, we can increment the number of overall correct images and the number of tag correct images. So we can display these results in the console and we can use some pretty colors to do so. I'm grabbing the text color in the console and setting that to a temporary variable. We'll then set the foreground color to green if we've made a correct prediction, otherwise red. We can then display that this file has been predicted at this tag name and display a percentage value of the probability of that prediction. And let's be a good citizen and set the console foreground color back to the temporary variable. We'll also add some code to copy the image to the predicted folder. So let's run this in the debugger and see what happens. So going through Austin Martin now, most of these are turning out green, but we are getting a few red values, and these seem to be for the Tesla Model S. Okay, we also got a Porsche GT3 coming in there as well. So it's quite good at predicting Aston Martins. Going through the Lamborghini Aventador now, 
And we've got a few that are classified as Porsche GT3 and an Austin Martin, but no Teslas. So let's process the GT3. Ah, oh, we've got Teslas, Lamborghinis and Austin Martins. But most of these are being correctly predicted as a Porsche GT3. And onto the Tesla. Uh, it's not doing so well here. It's falsely classifying quite a few of these images. So the final scores, we got 80% for Austin Martin, 86% for the Aventador, 80% for the GT3, and 63% for the Model S. And overall, about 80% of these predictions were correct. Going back to the statistics that were generated when we trained the model, we can see that the values here are slightly different. It's giving an overall accuracy, or AP, of 85%. And it's indicating slightly higher predictions for the probability of the individual cars. So when you're building and training models, we really should test the models ourselves using test data sets that the model hasn't seen. The training statistics are useful as a guide to the accuracy of the model, but unless you're testing it with real data, it's not going to be a true representation. Navigating to the predictions folder, we can go into the images that were predicted as an Austin Martin DB9. We can see that most of these are DB9s, but we do have a couple of Avantadors in there, a few Porsche GT3s and some Tesla Model S's there as well. We can see that some of these images are from the back of the car, which gives an indication that the model might not be great at predicting cars with these types of images. So we may want to look at the training data and see that we've got some of these images in the training sets as well. Looking in the Avantador folder, we can see that it's mostly Avantadors. There's no DB9s, but there's a couple of Porsches and three Teslas there as well. Onto the GT3 folder, we've got a couple of DB9s, quite a lot of Lamborghini Aventadors, a number of Porsche GT3s, and a couple of Model S's down at the bottom. The Tesla Model S was the least accurate. You can see that we've got quite a lot of Aston Martin DB9s in here, a few Porsche GT3s, but no Lamborghini Aventadors. Maybe this is because the Model S is quite curvy, whereas the Aventador is modelled more on straight lines. In the next webcast, we'll look at building out confusion matrices, so we can understand how well the model is predicting, and also which are the most common mistakes that the model will be making in its predictions. My name's Alan Smith, and I work as a developer, trainer, mentor and evangelist for Active Solution in Stockholm, Sweden. I'm a NASA MVP, and I speak at many international conferences. I'm also involved in the organisation of the Cloud Burst Conference and the AI Burst Conference, hosted in Stockholm. I specialise in delivering classroom and on-site training in the Microsoft Azure and AI technologies. I also deliver remote training and mentoring. I host seminars and workshops for companies. I've authored a number of Pluralsight courses, and I also speak at conferences. If you're interested in any of the above, feel free to contact me on cloudcast.net at gmail.com.